Well, good morning, Selby Pastoral Charge, and welcome to this time of worship for November 1st, 2020. Today, I'm taking one last paddle in one of our local rivers before it's time to put the canoe away for another year. For me, getting out in the canoe is a real source of joy. It's an opportunity to be outdoors, in God's creation. It's good exercise, and it's time away from the demands of everyday life. But of course, I can't canoe every day. <laughs> the things that give us joy come and go. And so we learn to live in hope for what is yet to come. Jesus once said to his disciples, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Now remain in my love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. And so we sing, Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living. As you love, may I love, in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. Let's begin our time of worship this morning with praise. Let's sing together. Well, this morning is pretty much a perfect morning to be out on the water. It's, uh, it's pretty cool though, and I can see that there's not many leaves left on the trees. A sure sign that the seasons are in mid-change. But even so, I am grateful for this opportunity to, to bring you with me on this adventure this morning. As we begin, why don't we start with a prayer? O oh, gracious and gathering God, we give you thanks for quiet, still mornings, for the beauty of your creation for the perfection of your seasons and your providence. But Lord, we know that all seasons and all times are not perfect. So help us to meet you there too. Help us to know that no matter what the circumstance, you are with us. And so as we worship today, help us to find you and meet you in the prayers, in your word for us today, and in the praise that we sing. In Jesus' name we, we pray. Amen. Well, now it's time for our music ministry. And so we welcome Jane Hughes, who is share, sharing her special song with us this morning. Yeah. 
Well, now's my time to speak directly to our young people. And today we're talking all about joy. I wonder what are some of the things that give you joy? Family vacations, uh, Halloween, getting presents maybe? <laughs> there are so many things that give us joy. But what are some of the things that take away our joy? I don't know, maybe rainy days or bullies on the bus or homework, boredom. I can think of all kinds of things, I guess. And we can see that life is a real mix of joy and a loss of joy. And I have a bit of an object lesson for us this morning about that. I've, of course, sitting here in a lake, and I'm going to pretend that this water represents joy. And this container represents us. So maybe when I, uh, when I get a present, I get a little bit of joy. And maybe when uh, I get to hang out with a, a friend, I get some more joy. And maybe when uh, I get to play some video games, I get even more joy. But of course, there are things that, that take away that joy, right? Let's say I have a big test coming up, and that takes away some of that joy. So we're always trying to get filled up with joy, but we never seem to get totally full, do we? Well, when we connect to Jesus, when we have Jesus in our life, we have a source of joy that is always connected to an endless supply. I've got my hose here connected right to the, to the river. And as we worship God and we sing God's praise and we love God in every way, God constantly fills us with joy. Jesus says that through him, he can make our joy complete. No matter what's going on today or tomorrow, no matter what joy-sucking stuff is happening, we still have a, an endless joy, which is God's supply of love. Well, let's lift our voices in singing so that God can fill us with his joy this morning. Let's sing, Your Love Awakens Me. between us by the cross you came and broke them down you broke them down there were chains around us by your grace we are no longer bound no longer bound you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is great shaking all the dead are coming back to life i'm back to life hear the song awaken all creation singing we're alive cause you're alive you called me out of the grave you called me into the light you called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater your love is stronger Awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Well, today we're finishing up our sermon series called Contentment by looking at how joy is the final key to living a content life. So let's listen now to the Word of God, which comes to us through the voice of Emmett Wyanzek. <laughs> today I'm reading from the letter to the Romans, chapter 8, verses 28 to 30. And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him 
who have been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters, and though he predestined, he also called that he called, he also justified those he justified, he also glorified. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Emmett. Well, now let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Come so that we might hear what you have for us today. And may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. There's an old story that one day the great Albert Einstein was on a train leaving Princeton Junction in New Jersey, heading north. But when the conductor came to his seat, Einstein was unable to find his ticket. He searched through all his pockets and looked in his briefcase, becoming increasingly disturbed. The conductor tried to, tried to comfort him, saying, Dr. Einstein, don't worry about it. I know who you are. I trust that you purchased a ticket. About 20 minutes later, the conductor came down the aisle of the train and once again and saw Einstein still searching wildly for that misplaced ticket. The conductor again said to, to him, Dr. Einstein, please, don't worry about it. I know who you are. Einstein stood and said in a gruff voice, Young man, I know who I am too, but I'm trying to find my ticket because I don't know where I'm going. That's food for thought, isn't it? Knowing where you're going can be both a source of joy and contentment. Often when I'm providing pastoral care to someone going through some tough stuff, I will ask a question. I'm not setting them up with this question. I really want to know the answer. What's giving you joy? You know what? No matter what that person is in the midst of, they almost always can give me an answer. Joy is possible even despite our circumstances. But the act of finding joy, no matter what, is not natural. In fact, it's kind of crazy. Having joy in your soul in the midst of chemo or breakup or catastrophe is just strange unless there is something that is better, more important news than your immediate circumstances. This morning we are concluding our sermon series called Contentment. And this week, having heard that Christians derive their contentment from both gratitude and generosity, we have one more key to unlock a life that is truly content. Joy. Now it's one thing to try to find the silver lining in every situation. And it can be helpful to be naturally predisposed to being a happy person because of your personality. But that's not what I'm talking about today. The kind of joy that leads to a life of contentment is not based on personality or outlook or even circumstances. That kind of joy will only get us so far. No, a Christian's joy is based on three reality-bending truths around which we order our lives. I've chosen for our reading this morning Romans because within that short famous text, we find neatly summarized how it is that Christians can find joy no matter what. In verse 28, we see that our bad things turn out for good. In verse 29, we can see that our good things can never be lost. And in verse 30, we can see that the best things are yet to come. So let's unpack those reality-bending truths this morning. First, our bad things turn out for good. Literally translated, verse 28 says, For those loving him, God works together all things for good. Now this verse is so often taken out of context. It's the kind of verse people love to turn into a meme and post on Facebook. But a discerning Christian must approach this text with care. Because the first implication of this text is that all things happen to Christians. Believing in Jesus does not, not exempt you from anything anyone else will endure. Christians are no better off, no luckier or more advantaged than any other human on earth. God's remarkably fair like that. But what Christians know, and what makes all the difference in the world, is that God is at work in the midst of all things. You see, modern Western people, when things go wrong, often respond, I'm going to sue. Because we believe that we're entitled to good things so long as we have paid our dues, made our contribution, obeyed the rules. But the Christian worldview is different. When something goes wrong, when our plans fail, instead of feeling entitled, we look at the situation and wonder, what's God going to do with this? 
John Newton once said, everything is necessary that he sends. Nothing can be necessary that he withholds. Do you see how that way of looking at the world totally shifts the paradigm? When we encounter life's challenges, we believe that God is so big and so beyond the limits of time and space that we can only begin to imagine how God is taking all of this into account for a future beyond our mind's limits. And I think that part of the problem with bad things is just the shock of them. As I encounter people in the midst of crisis of one kind or another, I'd say that 50% of the crisis is caused by the presumption that nothing bad will ever happen to me. I'm a pretty good person. I've made good life choices. I've got good genes. Those kinds of problems happen to someone else. But Christians shouldn't be shocked because we count each day as an undeserved blessing. We understand that the bad stuff is part of living in a broken world. And we believe that someone, somehow our great God is using these unfortunate circumstances to accomplish something we don't yet understand. Paul will go on to say, I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. Can you see how that way of understanding life's blessings and challenges makes a real difference? Next, in verse 29, we can see that our good things can never truly be lost. God doesn't promise us a better life set of circumstances. He promises us a whole better life. Jesus Christ did not suffer so that you would not suffer. He suffered so that when you suffer, you'll become more like him. And that's what it means when Paul says, for those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the likeness of his son. Predestined. That's a, a fancy word that means fixed from the beginning. You see, you and I live our lives with the fog of the future before us. We neither know nor fully comprehend what's happening in the past, nor what can we very accurately predict the future. Just ask the session as we've tried to make decisions this week about future in-person worship services. We're not very good at predicting the future. But in light of a God who is not limited by time or space, we know that everything that happens is being used to contour polish and shape us into the image of Jesus. We are being made fit for heaven, so to speak. In other words, your glory is going to be like his glory. And the fix is in. It's already decided. You get to decide many things in your lifetime, and we live with the consequences of those decisions. But one thing is decided in advance. You don't need to try to convince God to let you in on this deal. It's predestined so you are on a collision course with glory. This brings us to our third point. The best things are yet to come. Whatever lies behind us, whatever we're facing right now, and whatever lies ahead of us, we have a future of glory. Try as we might, there is no other reality that can allow people to have joy in the, their souls no matter what. Sometimes you hear people who have come through hard things and they'll try to put a, a certain positive spin on it. You know, she died in that accident, but now there are some new laws and it will hopefully save lives in the future. Okay, that's good. But it can never give us the joy that we've lost. But in Christ, our bad things turn out for good. Our good things can never be lost. And the best things are yet to come. I notice it is now popular to have your ashes planted with a tree. And people sometimes say, see, new life. <laughs> what it was dead is now bringing oxygen and beauty to the world. And that's lovely. But it can never give us overwhelming joy. But in Christ, our bad things turn out for good. Our good things can never be lost. And the best things are yet to come. For those whose life is a grind or a painful challenge, for those who wake up in the morning and wonder how they can face yet another day, we know that in Christ none of it can tarnish what lies ahead. What is the impact of this way of understanding life and death and life beyond death? It's not only joy in the midst of challenge and contentment in life, but it's a way of living that is remarkable because it takes all the pressure off. Instead of trying to turn our best years into something with eternal consequences, we can live content, in joy, knowing that in God, nothing is ever truly lost. 
Don Giuseppe Berardelli, a Catholic priest for 47 years, was serving as the archpriest in northern Italy, one of the areas hardest hit by the coronavirus back in March. Berardelli had been suffering from a, a respiratory condition for some time, so his parish had previously purchased him a breathing apparatus to help him cope. When he contracted the coronavirus and was hospitalized, his resp respirator went with him. Meanwhile, due to a shortage of ventilators, doctors were having to make agonizing decisions about who lives and who dies. Berardelli chose to give up his ventilator for someone younger and who would live because of his ultimate sacrifice. The mayor of the town where he lived said, said of Berardelli, a great person. He was always cheerful and full of enthusiasm. He gave peace and joy to our communities. Don Giuseppe Berardelli passed away in hospital. As with most victims of this pandemic, there was no in-person funeral. But local reports say that the people of Caserta, Italy, applauded him from their balconies at noon on Monday, March 16, 2020. What the world needs more is not people with a sunny disposition or a happier outlook, although that wouldn't hurt. But what we need is people who live in unspeakable joy because they know that in the midst of life's challenges, there is a much bigger story unfolding. What would make all the difference is people who in Christ know that no, no matter what, our bad things will turn out for good our good things can never be lost, and the best things are yet to come. That will set us free to live in joy, no matter what. Thanks be to God. Amen. Scared How oh, I thought I knew Scared Now I'm so filled with fear I can hardly move Doubt I've had my share of doubt But never more than right now I'm wondering where are you Here on the edge of all Somehow your promises bind my troubled heart This is the truth I'm standing on Even when all my strength is gone You are faithful forever Cause I know you'll never let me fall Right now I'm choosing to believe Someday soon I'll look back and see All the pain had a purpose Your plan was perfect all along This is the truth I'm standing on Good I believe you're still even when life's not good, I will not lose this hope that the God who parts the sea promises He's gonna make a way for me. Oh, this is the truth I'm standing. Faithful forever, cause I know you'll never let me fall. Right now I'm choosing to believe. Someday soon I'll look back and see all the pain had a purpose. Your plan was perfect all along. This is the truth I'm standing on. shield my firm foundation. I know I will not be shaken.
taken You remind me where my help comes from This is a truth I'm standing on Even when all my strength is gone You are faithful forever And I know you'll never let me Well, speaking of joy, one of the joys that I have had over the past months is receiving so many letters and emails from people who have been connecting with our churches because of our online services. Well, today we have the pleasure of introducing you to one of those people. Louise Story lives in Napanee, and she's been looking for opportunities to serve her Lord. And she feels particularly called to Selby Pastoral Charge in this time. Louise has a wonderfully deep faith and uh, she's offered in any way that she can help in our church. So I plan to take her up on that offer. I want to introduce you to Louise, and she's going to share with us something that she's written just for us today. Here's Louise's story. Good morning. It's such a privilege to be here this morning, and I would really love to share some of the things that I write. I feel God calls me on occasion to write and to share with others, so that's what I'm going to try to do this morning. Choosing joy. When we choose God, we choose joy. When we choose joy, we choose life. Though the road before us may be long and the hills are steep, though the days are dark and the nights are lonely, though our friends are distant and our hearts are saddened, though our jobs are disappearing and our food may be scarce, though our health may be impacted and our thoughts may be overwhelmed, though our faith may be tested and our beliefs may be challenged, God's love for us, his faithfulness to us will never change. His words and his promises will stand forever. Like Paul, we might consider it pure joy to suffer, to serve the Lord in times of strife, to be an example to those around us. Though we could let fear grip us and we could let our souls be troubled, when we choose to follow Jesus, to look for him each day, we find inexplicable joy. Heavenly Father, thank you for your faithfulness. You are always with us. We humbly ask in the precious name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that you would grant us the strength to joyfully choose the road less traveled, knowing that in the end, it ends in eternity with you. Amen. Freely we have received and freely we give. It's now time for our offering. If you'd like to send your offering this morning, you can do so by, by mail, by e-transfer, or by joining our automatic banking option called PAR. The details for the first two options are on your screen now. So I offer this simple blessing over all the gifts that have been given to God's service in this time. These are the work of our hands and the love of our hearts. May they be a blessing to this community and the wider world. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, now it's time to join our hearts and minds together in prayer. Will you pray with me? Oh, gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the joy that is available through you. A joy that is not determined by our particular circumstances, but a joy for life that is so deep and so wide. Or it is so easy to get caught up in our circumstances. And of course, circumstances matter. But help us to enjoy, to, to dwell, to soak ourselves in your joy. So that no matter what, we can imagine a future that is worth living. And so now, Lord, we come before you with with our gratitudes, for that is the first step in living a contented life. And Lord, we have so many things to be thankful for, big things and little things. And so for each of us, in this time of silence, we come before you with those things. And now, Lord, we come before you with the things that weigh on our hearts and minds around our community and our wider world. It's not hard to come up with a list, O oh Lord, but of course, we continue to pray for the COVID-19 situation. And Lord, there doesn't seem to be a simple solution on the horizon. And so we pray for those who are struggling in this time, for those who suffer, 
We pray for ourselves, for we ourselves are feeling weary of the whole situation. Lord, we also lift up uh, our American brothers and sisters as they begin to go to the polls this week. We pray for that country which is so divided on the polarities of the political spectrum. I also pray for our own nation, for we too are suffering that same virus uh, which is uh, dividing us. Lord, help us to have the mind of Christ, which is not to divide the world by our rights and our, our viewpoints, but to look at the world and wonder how we can serve, how we can love, even those who are different from us. And so, Lord, we come before you with the things that we find that weigh on our hearts and minds today. And we put, put it into your hands and trust you with the outcome. And now, O oh Lord, we come before you with the names of those that weigh on our hearts and minds. And we pray for ourselves too. For this is a difficult time. And, and we would be in denial if we didn't acknowledge how how we are struggling to get by day by day. And so now we come before you with those names of, of those who are feeling alone, for those who are feeling angry, for those who are struggling to, uh, to make ends meet in this difficult time. Lord, we come before you with those names. And now we pray as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, now as our service winds to a close, let us join together in singing a real fun one. I got the joy. Let's sing. so glad that you could join us again today. Tomorrow I'm heading away for a little time of rest and joy with my family. So next Sunday we look forward to having Reverend Jean Brown and the folks from Centenary Pastoral Charge joining us right here at the same time and the same place. And so until then, go with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go now in peace and joy. Amen. Mm -hmm.